Highway alignments consist of tangents connected by curves. So we start with simple traverses to lay out our tangents and we'll connect them in a later step through the highway design process with smooth curves. So the fundamental information you need to locate a line in space or essentially to locate an unknown point based on a known point. So in this case point A is our known point or moving to point B. So to locate the line between those points or point B itself you need three components. So there's three critical pieces of information you need. You need the angle and so we can represent that as an azimuth or a bearing. You need the distance between those two points and then the elevation of point B. And then you can know with certainty the line that will connect those two points. It's very important to understand the accuracy of any traverse or any surveying work that's done. And most states will have an organization that specifies the minimum accuracy required for particular types of survey work, which can range from, in North Carolina, for example, an error, an acceptable error of one foot for every 5,000 feet, or at the higher end of the scale, only a one foot error in 20,000 feet. So that means over that length of the either boundary or the roadway or the alignment, an error that large would only be tolerated. Plane surveying is the type of surveying that's used and assumed for smaller projects. So if it's a relatively localized area, maybe just a couple of miles long, uh, you may assume that the earth is flat, it simplifies the calculations required. Stationing is used in surveying where we will use one station equals 100 feet. So for instance, the number 4,357.12 feet can be represented as station 43 plus 57.12. Grades, we use percents, and it's important to associate a positive or a negative with grades. And we'll associate those signs, positive or negative, as the grade, as the station increases. So when we move from station zero up in stations, it's from that perspective. So in a roadway, obviously traffic is going in both directions. So it's every grade is uphill in one direction and downhill in another. So we'll assign positive or negative in the direction of increasing stationing. And as far as coordinate systems, there are several that can be used. Latitude and longitude is common. State plane coordinates are also used. And in the state of North Carolina, there's a law that specifies that minimum accuracy. For angle measurements, again, we can use azimuths or bearings. Azimuths we always use north as the reference angle, and so that angle varies from zero up to 360 degrees. For a bearing angle, the reference angle shifts from either north to south, depending on which uh, is closer to the line of interest. And then so we'll move from that reference angle towards the direction, either east or west, some angle. So for instance, line N or angle NAB would be north 50 degrees, 24 minutes, 16 seconds east. So meaning we start at the reference angle north, we turn an angle of 50 degrees, 24 minutes, 16 seconds in the east direction. We prefer to always have a closed traverse. And so these, each of these are examples of closed traverses. The first one is closed because the alignment or the lines connect with each other within the stated minimum accuracy. The second type, which is going to be more common for highway alignment, is that we have some alignment and we have multiple control points and our alignment is within the stated accuracy relative to those control points. The opposite is an open traverse. An open traverse is, some, is an, a survey or an alignment that doesn't close within sufficient accuracy or doesn't tie into two control points. And we can use a number of calculations to work around a traverse, calculating our latitude and departure. So latitude is the north or south component. Uh, 
we use the equations, the distance multiplied by the cosine of the bearing. And it's important that the signs do matter in this when we're dealing with latitudes and departures. Uh, it's important to make sure we have the appropriate sign positive for north and positive for east. And then for negative, that will be south and west movements. The departure, again, of the east-west component of the line is the distance multiplied by the sign of the bearing. We can get the distance by squaring the latitude and departure and then taking the square root of those sums. And this really summarizes the use of simple traverses in a highway alignment context.